But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his <coughs> arms around him, and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of, my, of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing, and so he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back, safe and sound. The older brother became angry. and He refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything that I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost, and now he's found. The word of God for the people of God. Today, um, for a change, I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> today is the today is the first anniversary of my grandmother's death. She died a year ago, and um, so during this last week, I've been more on a contemplative contemplative mood, and so I. I just don't have a lot of words and a lot of things to say today, but I think that I can leave you with, with something that you can think about. Because, because I am really enjoying very much our Lenten devotional. Um, I, I want to tell you that when Alan and I were looking for devotionals for this Lenten season, um, the only reason I chose this was because I was looking at the cover. And there are three things in here that I love. Um, the first thing was that um, it says here, Lenten reflections based on the parable of the prodigal son. And, um, and I love the parable, as you can tell, the parable of the prodigal son. And then, um, there is this beautiful picture of a father embracing his son. And the title, From Fear to Love. So that's it. I didn't look inside. I mean, it's just wonderful that these <laughs> reflections are great, but it was just a cover. I, um, I fell in love with the parable of the prodigal son long time ago because my family uh, went through some very difficult times and uh, at that time it just felt as if we were living the parable of the prodigal son. So looking back on those days I think that the most important lesson that I learned 
is that we go through our lives, that as we go through our life, we play the role of each one of the characters in this parable. Um, in different times of our lives. Sometimes we are the prodigal son. And uh, we just go to a faraway land and we get lost there. Other times we are the resentful and self-righteous elder brother. And then we fill ourselves with anger and unforgiveness. But other times, we are the forgiving Father, and we forgive, and we love unconditionally. And I think this is all part of our journey, and, and I think that that is the way it should be, and I think that that is all right. It is all right because, because thank God it has nothing to do with us and everything to do with the love that God has for us. And so today's devotion, see, the title of today's devotion is, is heading, home, heading for Home. So today's devotion has, has everything to do with this title that I loved so much, From Fear to Love. I have a gift for you. <laughs> and so we know and we rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love, because we love because he first loved us. This is 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 to 19. There is no fear in love. Perfect love will cast out <coughs> all fears because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears does not understand love. From all the things that the prodigal son lost, he managed to keep the one thing, just one thing. He never forgot who his father was. And even though he did everything he could to hurt himself and to destroy himself, there was that one thing that he could not remove himself from. He couldn't take away the love of his father because he was his father's child. And there was nothing that he could do to change that. And that was what took him back home. What made him return was the realization that no matter what, the door of his father's heart would always be open for him because regardless of all that he did, he was still his son. <clears throat> 